Hello, this is Alex Anpangyo, Techno Valley Weekly News. Here's the news from the first week of October. Last year's revenue numbers are in for Pangyo Techno Valley companies. Among the 1,697 resident companies in Pangyo Techno Valley, 92.1% were in the high tech industry and 87.6% were SMEs. Last year's revenue amounted to 109.9 trillion won for all the companies combined. According to a survey conducted by the Gyeonggi-do Business and Science Accelerator and the Gyeonggi Urban Innovation Corporation on Pangyo Techno Valley 1 and 2 resident companies from April to July of this year, there were 1,697 resident companies and 1,487 were SMEs, or about 87.6% of the total. In Techno Valley 1, 1,112, 85.5% were SMEs, a slight decrease from last year's percentage of SMEs at 85.9%. In Techno Valley 2, 375 of 397 companies were SMEs, or about 94.5%. The 2020 revenue of Techno Valley 1 and 2 was, as I mentioned, 109.9 trillion won, and Techno Valley 1 represented 99% of that with 108.8 trillion won. The 159 large companies at 60.3% and median companies around 26.9% in Techno Valley 1 accounted for 87.2% total of that total revenue. By industries, 1,096 or 64.6% were in IT, 228 or 13.4% were in biotech, 220 or 13% were in cultural technology, and 19 or 1.1% in nanotechnology. Those 1,563 companies represent 92% of the whole. The number of full-time workers is 71,967, and the main age groups for workers is 30s and 40s, representing 72.1% of the workforce. Among all employees of Pangyo Techno Valley, 34.6% were research personnel, 27.8% were women, and 16.6% were new employees. Pak chong il head of Gyeonggi-do Future Industry Division, said Pangyo Techno Valley 1 and 2 will connect with each other to provide a better environment for resident companies. We will continue supporting the development of Pangyo Techno Valley. For the next story, Naver wins ESG annual report global competition. Naver announced on October 5th that its 2020 ESG environmental, social, and governance report and its annual report have received awards at the global competitions ARC awards and the LACP Vision Awards. With this, Naver was awarded for two consecutive years in the annual report and sustainability report competition from the highest global authority. With the 2020 ESG report first published by Naver this year, Naver took the Platinum Award at the LACP Vision Awards and the Grand Award in the Specialized Annual Reports category at the ARC Awards. The annual report also won the gold medal in both competitions this year. Previously, Naver submitted its annual report to the ARC Awards last year and the LACP Vision Awards in 2019 and won the Grand Prize and the Gold Prize respectively. Last year, it ranked 59th globally at the LACP Vision Awards. According to a statement from Naver, various content such as ESG management efforts, financial information, messages from the CEO, and design were faithfully reflected in the ESG report and the annual report, and they were able to win both awards this year. Pak Sang-jin, neighbor CFO, said, I think this is the result of transparent sharing of the values and philosophy that Naver pursues and the process of promoting growth with our partners. He continued, we will do our best to communicate with various stakeholders for the future direction of the company and grow together. For our third main story, Crafton Rising Wings globally launches Castlecraft. Rising Wings, an independent studio of Crafton, released its new game, Castlecraft, globally on October 5th. Castlecraft is a mobile, real-time strategy game in which the player strategically constructs buildings and produces troops through real-time face-to-face battles to destroy the opponent's camp and expand the player's realm. Rising Wings released the first part of the teaser video on the Rising Wings official YouTube channel. Six models of Castlecraft, including Lim Yohan and Hong Jino, will reappear following the pre-sales campaign. At the end of the video, a three-on-three -three game with Im Yohan, Pak Taemin, 
and Kang Min versus Hong Jin-ho, Im Song chun and Kim Dong-min. Foreshadows the plan to bring Castlecraft to several competitions. Kang Moon Chol, Vice President of Rising Wings, said Castlecraft will provide the fun of traditional RTS and pioneer a new genre of mobile RTS. To expand and continue the fun of the game, we will run events and competitions and also prepare a policy to support fan competitions. And finally, for our big stories, We Made Tree signs MOU with Gala Games. We Made Tree signed a business partnership agreement with Gala Games, a blockchain game platform. Gala Games is a blockchain game platform founded by Zanga co founder Eric Shiremeyer and features the player's direct participation in running the platform. It is servicing various blockchain games, starting with Townstar, created by Michael McCarthy, the creative director of Farmville 2. Farmville 2 is one of Zanga's most successful games, enjoyed by about 50 million people every month. Currently, Gala Games has about 1.8 million monthly users, and NFT item transactions for the games in service are also actively taking place. We Made Tree and Gala Games have decided to seek cooperation in game production and operation and blockchain technology. Especially, it is planning to strengthen collaboration related to NFT items. We Made Tree is currently servicing various games, wallets, and NFT markets, including Mir for Global on its own blockchain platform, WeMix. And it will further expand the scalability of WeMix through this cooperation. And finally, here's your quick news of the week. First up, NHN Commerce wins hackathon hosted by Mock Alliance. NHN announced on October 5th that its commerce subsidiary NHN Commerce won the feasibility category at the hackathon Macathon hosted by the e-commerce global non-profit organization Mock Alliance. The second quick news, 01.ai receives excellence award in Pangyo AI Camp Natural Language category. 01.ai, a leader in security data AI platform technology, announced on October 5th that it won the excellence award in the final round of the online AI competition Pangyo AI Camp that was held for two weeks from August 30th. And finally, Crafton supports the creation of a Battlegrounds professional team. Crafton will support the creation of, of a professional team for Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. New and amateur teams selected for the Foundation Support Program will be eligible to participate in the 2022 East Asian Regional Professional Tournaments, such as the PUBG Weekly Series, or PWS, and the Battlegrounds Smash Cup. They will receive the same level of team operating expenses as current professional teams, and when they advance to global competitions, they will receive a profit share from eSports item sales. And that's it for the Pangyo Techno Valley Weekly News this week. My name is Alex Sigrist, and I will see you next time.